This is a tour of my 6x12 tiny house that started life like this. And now looks like this. So on the front we have two 20 pound propane tanks. I live off of gravity water tanks so this is where I fill my water. And that is my sewer connection. And when you stay in this park longer than three months you have to have a rigid sewer line connection so while it just screws on like a regular flexible RV sewer hose, it is a rigid line. That's one of four windows in the house. I've got a light on each side. Keep it nice and bright in the dark. I have a 10 foot awning on there. The trailer came with a RV door, but I put the window into it. Installing the window and the door in 2018, and I used a drill and a jigsaw, so it's scary cutting holes in your house. And this door actually opens up from the inside. It's an escape hatch, and this one is bolted shut. Right now the air conditioning is covered because it's winter and I'm not using it. And down here I have a 2000 watt generator as backup power when the power goes out. I have these storage bins for storing everything else that does not fit in my tiny house and they are weather tight. This is my water hookup that's covered right now because it's insulated and I just pull that off to turn it on because I only turn it on to fill up my gravity water tanks or to do laundry. And I do have a portable washer and dryer. That's a whole other video. And that's my 30 amp connection, but I only use 15, so there's a splitter in there. One goes into the house, and the other's auxiliary to run things outside, like ice makers in the summer, etc. And I live right next to an old cemetery from the 1800s. It's actually a very cool place to go explore. Like, look at this one leaning. And you gotta have a little greenery in the winter. And then out here I have a lake, with a solar fountain, and my two yachts. So let's have a peek inside the house. Top-notch security. And here we go. When I bought this empty cargo trailer in 2018, it was because I was watching YouTube all the time and I saw all those nomads in their vans and I really wanted to live that life. But I worked full time and I wasn't gonna become a nomad just like that. And I still don't think I would ever do that after living in this house for almost six years. So when I started this project, it was really if you look at the back of a Sprinter van, they're about 12 feet long and about 6 feet wide, which are about the measurements of this trailer. And I wanted to see, one, could I even build something inside of a trailer, because I'd never built anything in my life, and everything you see here, I built. And two, would I like it? Could I really exist in this space? And after almost six years, I love it. So this is going to be a tour of my 6x12 tiny house. It doesn't have solar and all the accoutrements to live off grid because that wasn't the purpose of it. The purpose was to be a tiny house and experimental really to see if I could live in this space. And obviously I can. So it has enough tank space and battery power to go for about three days without any services. This is absolutely my little castle and I love it. I didn't do videos for YouTube when I built this house because I didn't think I was going to do YouTube. So I do have a lot of pictures and I'll show you those along the way of how I built the house. So we'll call this the great room because it's my living room, my bedroom, and my dining room, and where I shower. <laughs> I'll show you. The living room. Very cozy. You can watch my big screen TV up there in the kitchen wall. Because <laughs> everything in this house is close together. <laughs> the big screen TV in the front of the house in the kitchen. And the JBL charge speaker that makes it sound real good. <laughs> the dining room. Ready for a gourmet meal. And while it looks like there's barely any space in between here, I can fit between there. I'll show you. Just like that. It's tight, but you can do it. And this table actually just folds back down and it becomes one of the cupboard doors along this line.
Done. And now, our bedroom. The Murphy bed. Ready to go. And just as easy as it comes down, right back up it goes. I did a whole video on how this Murphy bed works and how I designed it, and that's coming up in the next few videos. Okay, so here we are. We're finally installing the bed. So we got that done. There's the frame for the bed. I got the floor finished underneath where it will go. And then what will happen is I'm gonna face this and put cabinets on it and underneath the bed is gonna be shoe and other storage under here. So I'm pretty bad at making videos, but obviously I got the bed installed and it works just fine. Those are the legs, one and two. So today I'm marking up the wall because I'm installing the cabinets that go above the bed. So the cabinets, here's the face of the cabinets. I already built them, be painted. The early days, installing the Murphy bed, getting it trimmed up and then getting it painted. That was a job. And then of course we have our shower back here in the house. And this is actually a gravity shower. And I've done a video on that too that's coming up. Quite interesting. The shower. And this is actually a step tub, so you can sit down while you shower. Super comfortable. All right, so now I've installed the front wall for the bathtub. And you can see down here, it's already um, painted. That's why I did the painting first, because there'll be a cupboard door here and a cupboard door here, so I can access underneath um, the tub once it's put in. So this is the platform to hold the seat of the tub. And that just connects onto the wall with a piece of wood that's screwed in, and then it sits on it, and then I bolted it in. And then it sits on this support under here between these two beams for the other side. So that's what the inside of the tub enclosure looks like now. And now I'm going to seat the tub and drill the three holes for the lip that go here, here, and here, and then take it out and put some tub surround glue there and then reseat the tub and then put the three bolts in and then the tub is in. Of course, I'll have the plumbing in the bottom of the tub already done. All right, show you that in a little bit. And almost a finished product, getting it all installed. I do not miss those days because I, in fact, lived in this tiny house while I built it. And I promise you, that was not very much fun. That is a warm air dehumidifier. And I've done a video on that too. Essential if you live in a tiny house in the cold weather. In the video where I talk about my warm air dehumidifier, I also explain how I heat my house. So that's coming up. And then clearly I have a little 420 watt air conditioning system. And because this house has rigid insulation, an inch in the walls and two inches in the floors and the ceiling, I can heat it or cool it to any temperature I want. Works really well. All right, and another wall insulated, just like that. You just cut it, put it in. I use Armax Thermosheath, two inches on the ceiling, one inch is all that will fit in the walls. Hidden underneath of this counter right here, is a regular RV toilet connected to a 15 gallon black tank. This is an escape hatch that I designed so that if anything ever happened in the trailer, a fire, a tree fell on the front of it, whatever, I just wanted to be able to get out of here without just one way in and one way out. So on one of the barn doors in the back, I lock it from the inside and I have this small panel that I can just pull out really quick and get out of here if I had to. So this back hatch has two small locks, top and bottom, that I can just pop out really quick and then it gives me access to the door. Pops right off. Now I have access to this door and I just undo the locks. And 
and the door opens up. Even with my little gut, I can still fit through here. <laughs> there the door is, wide open. So with the Murphy bed pretty much built, I'll show you a picture of that later, I'm putting in a wall, a fake wall along the back door. This door won't be able to open anymore. I'm bolting it shut at the top and the bottom. And then I'll put a fake wall in with insulation to seal that up. And then I need to get this wall done and the ceiling because I need to install the Murphy bed. And before I can install the Murphy bed, all this needs to be finished because then it goes up uh, against the wall and bolts into the floor and then I won't have access to this area. So that's what we're working on today. Okay, so I got the wall framed in. Now I'm gonna run some wires up over here to the other side of the wall because I'm gonna put an outside light right there and I just need to get the wires put in. Then I'm gonna insulate it with pink insulation here and then put the rigid in in these areas and then this is going to be an insert that will come in and out so that I have access to get in and out of this door and I'll be putting three inside latches one two three I already bolted the second door this one shot you can see there's a metal plate up there and it's bolted into the frame and then into the frame of the door and then I also bolted the bottom I have those rags there because there's a big air gap and it's hot 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 out and I got the AC going love it so eventually that center piece right there will have a handle and a little latch on it so that I can pull it in and out should I need to get out of that back door of the trailer. So that's how it's going to work. All right, moving on to the next project, starting to get the ceiling up. So up here are the four cupboards where I store all my clothing. And I do switch it up a bit between summer and winter and keep some of it out in those storage bins. So. You just got to learn how to fold up your clothes real small to keep them all in these cupboards. But this is a pretty spacious closet for me. Underwear and socks, keep them in these little bags, you can just pull them out, super easy to access. Okay, so I have cut out the trim in the ceiling where the cabinets are going to fit all the way down and <clears throat> everything is marked where all of the support beams go in so now what i'm doing is texturizing the ceiling because of those little uh, creases from where i bent it to put it in my jeep because it didn't fit <laughs> and they don't really show up until you paint it arr, 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 arr. So, I'm going to get the ceiling done real quick, and then tomorrow morning, those cabinets go up. How about that? It was such a relief to actually finally have some cabinets to put stuff in and get it up off the floor while I was building the house. Ah, <sighs> the good old days. And in these lower cupboards is where I store my shoes. So these are all shoes in here. This is my bag for my laptop and all my filming gear that I now use. More shoes. Shoes, and this is a little Korean barbecue. We'll have to do a video on that someday. And then under here, I have my stand mixer, which is like a miniature KitchenAid. And this is a 1000 watt power bank. It's a lithium iron phosphate, so hopefully it won't start fire. <laughs> Gotta have your smoke detector. Saves your life carbon monoxide detector, and a propane gas detector. And that's how I power my trailer during power outages, which we have up here in the mountains quite frequently. And that'll run my trailer for about two days. And when that starts to go low, I use my generator, it's a 2000 watt Honda knockoff generator, to power the trailer and recharge the battery. On this side of the house, underneath of the bathtub or the shower, because there's a seat in it, it creates a lot of storage. And even in the front of the tub where it comes up close to the cabinet door, you can still fit shampoos and body washes. So under here, that's what I keep along with paper towels and toilet paper. You have to use every square inch in a tiny house. Only way you can exist comfortably. So this is the refrigerator in my tiny house. It's about the size of a standard RV refrigerator, but I chose to just get this 110 volt Energy Star refrigerator over an RV refrigerator because 
it was about $180 versus $1,400. And it was much easier to install because I didn't have to cut any holes on the outside of my house. Because the refrigerator uses coils in the side of it to cool itself, what I did was these are the compression beams that hold it in place on each side. And there's one on each side. As I left a space at the top and at the bottom so cool air can go in and then as it heats up hot air just comes out the top and that's how the refrigerator cools itself works very efficiently it's been in here well we're going on six years and it's still working building the cabinet frame and installing the refrigerator that was a big relief to have a much bigger refrigerator because when i first moved into the tiny house i just had a little dorm size refrigerator the cupboard above it is just my personal stuff, my bag and all my records and things. And then there's also a four gallon gravity tank for the shower up there. And below it is where I keep all my personal grooming items. So just my grooming bag, some creams and things, and then there's a bag behind there because up here in the mountains, you have to keep a backup for everything. So I have extras of deodorant, toothpaste, all that stuff. Because we only shop about once every month and a half. So this cabinet right here was designed to fit an apartment size washer. But it ended up that I didn't use that in this house for many reasons. So right now that's just a storage unit where I keep my dirty laundry. And below this cabinet is where I keep all my cleaning supplies, my laundry detergent, Windex, bleach, etc. So since I've been living in my house for almost six years, it's starting to get pretty beat up. You can see where I have hit the sides of things so many times that the paint's coming off. And then I have a little table I keep over here, like a TV tray, that I've dropped onto this cabinet so many times it's damaged it. So in an upcoming video, I'm gonna show you how I redo these cabinets. And the cabinet's at the front of my great room, the great room, <laughs> are my spice cabinets. I like to cook. Gotta have a lot of spices. And that controls my outside lights. One in the front, one in the back, and one on each side of the trailer. My little trash can. More spices. And then that hose that is connected to pressurized water is a whole other video about my portable washer and dryer. And that's how I fill it with water. Buy some laundry cabinet was tricky because it was one big cabinet with a lot of angles. You gotta have a Craig jig to make cabinets. And the last cupboard on this side of the house is a giant pantry for food. And it needs to be filled right now. Going shopping here in about two days. That's my 12 volt distribution panel right there. And the rest of it is just food. Gotta have all the basics since I cook from scratch up here. That is my 12 volt converter for my 12 volt electric. So I'm really not gonna go into the electrical system very much in this house because it's just super simple. It's a tiny house. It wasn't designed to be a nomad house with a super sophisticated solar panels and lithium batteries that feed inverters and converters it's just not what it is it's connected to the grid it has a regular household distribution box for the 110 it feeds four outlets and then i already showed you the converter and that feeds my 12 volt system and i did originally have a battery in this house an ajm battery but after a year i don't know four years or so i'd run it dead a few times <laughs> And I wasn't going to spend the amount of money to replace that because I'll show you on the screen when I got this 1000 watt lithium iron phosphate power bank, it was only a little bit more than getting an AGM battery. And I thought that was a better deal for this house. So now we come to the front of my little castle, my favorite part, the kitchen. <laughs> Originally when I designed this house, I designed it to accommodate the biggest slide in RV stove you could get. It was supposed to have this exact cooktop with the cast iron top and a giant oven that went all the way down to the bottom of this cupboard right here. But I ordered that unit five times 
and five times it came damaged. So I just gave up and just got the cooktop. So let's do a tour of my kitchen. So this kitchen, like the rest of the house, operates on gravity water. So this sink and the toilet in the house all operate off of this little three gallon gravity water tank. That gravity water tank is fed by this 25 gallon water tank at the bottom of my house right there. And that's the gray water tank for the kitchen. So in a video that's coming up, I'm going to explain exactly how this gravity water system works and how my kitchen gray water tank actually flushes out my black tank. So in these cabinets above and below my kitchen, I store everything I need to live like a king in this little castle. So on this side, We have our plates, our cups, our bowls, and our little salad plates. These store little accoutrements like our measuring spoons and all the little clips I use to seal the bags of leftover food. That is an emulsion blender and that is a little scale because some recipes tell you to use certain grams of recipes instead of cups or tablespoons and i had no idea how to do that without getting a little scale and on this side of the cabinets i have glass cooking ware a measuring cup all my mixing bowls these are all my little ramekins and then behind here is a Ninja food processor. And then this is just cups and all my silverware. And behind there is a thermos. Of course, you gotta have a toaster and plastic gloves because you don't want to touch raw meat. That is my three burner cooktop with a cast iron grate. And while there was supposed to be an oven that went with it right there, instead, I have to use this electric convection oven and then I just store all of my cutting boards and extra accoutrements down here. Above the stove, of course we have a vent hood. While that may look like a Berkey, it is not. It is called a water drop and it costs less than half of a Berkey. So that's why I got it and it works perfectly. And below that is a cabinet where I store my canned vegetables and canned fruits. And then this is a pressurized water bottle, of course, manually pressurized, that we use to fill the gravity shower. And that's a video coming up. And then the cabinet below where I store my oven is where I keep all my pots and pans, my Instapot, a miniature blender, and other accoutrements. And behind this, which is my water heater, are more pots and pans. The cabinet below the sink is more food storage. So this is all of my kitchen utensils. And then I keep a backup. That's coffee. I have everything I use back here. And this is all bulk food storage. So these are all one gallon containers under here and more kitchen utensils. I love me some vinegar to clean stuff. So just bulk food storage. And of course, the gray water tank. And all my knives. And below that I keep all the lids for my pots and pans. And my washcloths. And then the cabinet next to that is where I store all of my teas. 
And then this is the water fill for my tank, and that's the airline, and then just kitchen towels. And as you can see, even though this is a tiny little house, I have quite a bit of kitchen area. So I built these kitchen countertops myself out of one quarter inch birch wood. And what I did was I just screwed them in and countersunk the screws and then filled them in and sanded it and then put about 10 coats of porch paint on them, which is polyurethane. And they've lasted for almost six years. So it's worked out pretty good. The frame for the kitchen countertop and then I seated the 1 8 inch birch wood on there to make sure it fit. And then after that, I screwed it in and sanded it, fitted the sink, and trimmed it all out and got it ready for the porch paint, which I put, I still believe, 10 coats, either 8 or 10. And there's the finished product. Sink installed, finally. And then putting the windows in, I used a jigsaw to cut the holes, which is scary, but it's the only thing I asked for help on building the trailer, because you have to put the window in on the outside, and then a frame goes on the inside and you screw it together finished product. That was a tour of my 6x12 tiny house that I built with these two hands. My name's Aaron by the way. <laughs> I have a lot of videos coming up about how everything in this house works and what it's like living in this 6x12 shoebox. So I hope to see you back soon. Bye!